All right, you guys, we are out here today and we are going to be throwing the Dox Lure Company 3.5 Gunner swim bait on a flipping jig head, just like that right there. Uh, we're mainly going to be slow dragging it as slow as we possibly can, as slow as I can handle throwing it, I guess. But in the cold water, slow rolling a swim bait can be really good to catch fish. Now, it, the, the water is a bit muddy, um, so you know it's not going to be as easy to get bites but i think if it was clear we probably would be able to get a bite or two uh we've got this 3.5 gunner in the minnow gray color and we're just going to be slow rolling that baby right along the bottom keeping it almost as much contact as possible with the bottom you know sometimes i'll reel it a little bit and then drop it reel a little bit then drop it just kind of depends on the way that i see the fish moving if I can see the fish moving, I normally won't even be dragging a swim bait. I'll just reel it slowly. What is that? Oh, heard it honk. I didn't know what it was. But, so right here, you guys can see the water is not all the way unthawed. You guys can see down there in the shallow end, it is still frozen. But, all this is unthawed except for that little patch of ice that's still standing there. So all this is unthawed though, so it's finally able to really be able to make a cast, finally, for the first time in, I think the first time all year it's really been able to make a full length cast. Uh, but we're trying to make at least three videos today, or at least two. We're going to try to make at least two videos out here at the pond today. One on a swim bait, which is this one here you guys are watching, and hopefully one on a drop shot, unless I catch fish on this. If I start catching fish on this, then I will definitely be keep on keeping on throwing this but i might switch over to a drop shot or a football jig just kind of depends on when i get done with this video what i really want to do if i want to throw something big and slow or small and slow i think with this muddier water i'm, I'm kind of leaning towards a black and blue jig with a black and blue mud crawler or black and blue flip out i don't really know though Leave down in the comments what you think I should go with. I mean, I'm going, I'm going to post all these videos at the same time. But leave you down, leave your opinion down in the comments of what you would throw at this type of situation where the pond is still halfway frozen, muddy water. Normally, I would throw one thing moving and one thing slow. Especially in moving or muddy water, I would go with a swim bait or a crank bait or a spinner bait. One of the three. You know, just trying to get a reaction strike, and then I would switch to a jig or a drop shot, shaky head with a big worm. Just kind of don't know what I want to throw, really. I'll probably end up throwing all of it. I'll probably end up fishing for a lot of today, uh, just because it's the first time in a long time I've actually been able to go fishing. I might do some searching around uh, around the yard here, look for some night crawlers just to try to catch a fish. You know, throw it on a small jig head and put it on the bottom. I might do some live bait fishing later. I don't know. Honestly, I'm just trying to catch a fish at this point. It doesn't matter what I catch it on. Bluegill, bass, doesn't matter. Crappie. There is crappie in here. Flip this swim bait around this brush. I need to back the tightness up on this reel it's a little bit too tight for this there we go now it's working good there's a good tip for you right there if you're having trouble flipping with a lighter weight uh, rig bait whatever you're flipping if you're flipping a jig uh, swim bait like this one here you know if you're flipping something like that if you're flipping a jig Texas rig or something and you're having trouble getting out to where you're trying to flip that little knob right there some reels have it and I've also I've seen other reels that don't but just just back that up just a little bit this way and that could help you a whole lot you guys can see there you know I'll go back I'll show you guys this real quick so I had it tightened up about that much bring this swim bait back here now I'm gonna try see that chunk of ice right out there I'm gonna try to hit it I came up about four feet short and that was a pretty good flip too. I was actually confident in that flip. Thought I was going to hit it. And you back it up just a little bit to where that bait falls quicker. 
I actually passed it. I landed on the other side of it, which in in a actual fishing situation would actually be pretty good. I'm gonna tighten it up just a little bit because I actually went over it and that's not what I wanted to do. So you want to make it to where you can cast but be accurate. In my opinion, when it comes to fishing, especially from a boat. You know, if you're just deep water fishing from the bank, I don't believe it's that much important. But if you're fishing from a boat and you're trying to find an exact spot, if you're trying to target an exact spot, I do believe that even though you're not going to get as much length out of your cast, I do believe the accuracy triumphs the length of your cast. That's, in my opinion, I think that's the main thing. But some people may think otherwise. Some people may believe that... You know, the farther the cast, the better. I think that when you're fishing from a boat or when you're trying to target a specific area, specific spot, I believe that accuracy is over length of cast. But when you're fishing deep water, especially from the bank and from the and from you know the boats and stuff, I think that length, you know, as far a cast as you can make is better. You know, especially when you're just trying to find the fish. You know, if you're just running a big giant crankbait or just throwing a small a finesse jig or whatever you're trying to do, I think that length can help a lot when you're fishing from, from the bank in deep water just trying to find fish. But when you're trying to target an area, I definitely believe that accuracy, accuracy is better. Once you get accurate... With a rod and reel, whether it's a spinning rod or a bait caster, you can be a deadly fisherman because you can make flips and casts that 90% of other fishermen can't. You can get in the areas that most fishermen can't, and especially in areas like where I fish here, a lot of the people around here, you know, even some of the bass fishermen don't fish like hardcore like I do. You know, I would consider myself as a as a hardcore fisherman because any day that I can go fishing, I go fishing. And any spot that I think a fish is going to be, I'm going to make that cast. Whether I lose a lure or not, I don't really care, depending on the bait I've got. You know, if it's a $17 lure, then no, I'm not going to cast there. But if I think, you know, that I can make a cast with a bait like this here, you know, a little jig head with a swim bait... If I can, if I think I can make that cast, I'm going to make that cast. And I'm probably going to catch a fish. You know, a lot of fish that some people may not think they'd catch because they're not going to cast there. You got to cast in places that most people won't. You know, if you're going down a bank in your boat and all of a sudden you see this big downed limb and you see like 20 lures sitting up in that tree where they've tried to cast there and have failed, cast there because people have tried and they can't. I'm sure there's been a few people who have successfully casted there, but if you're accurate with your setup and you know how to use it and you know how to fish it, you can cast there and you can make a perfect presentation, you can make a very subtle presentation, and more, most of the time when you're making a perfect, subtle presentation, you'll be able to catch the biggest fish in that area. You know, I've seen people literally fish behind people. And catch fish that are bigger than any of the fish they caught because they're more careful of their surroundings they're more careful what they're doing they're more careful with their bait selection you know if you're I've done this I've literally done this I can I can say that this has worked before me before where I could see somebody up ahead of me on the bank just bombing a spinnerbait and not catching a single fish and I sat there and watched them because I was watching what they were doing, seeing what they were doing and what I could do better than what they were doing. They were just bombing a spinnerbait out and then just slow rolling it back in. And they weren't getting a single bite. So, when I got up to that area and he left, you know what I switched up to? I switched up to a drop shot. A lot of people would be like, why would you switch up to a drop shot when that guy there was fishing a moving bait? That guy didn't catch anything. And I knew that area had fish in it because it was perfect time of the year, perfect weather conditions for that area to be full of fish. I mean, this is a flat that you guys have seen me fish this flat before 
where it's about one and a half feet to two feet the entire way for about a hundred yards wide and about a hundred yards long. It is a gigantic flat that is almost one depth the entire time. And this was probably, I don't know, I'm going to say probably mid-March, I'm going to say, mid-March area, which around here is pre-spawn. And, I mean, a spinnerbait would work. A spinnerbait sh probably should have worked. It would have been great, great conditions for it. But you just because the conditions look right, like, these conditions right here, if it was summertime with these conditions, there's three baits I'd be throwing. Number one, a Strike King Sexy Dog. Number two, a Strike King 1.5 Square Bill Chartreuse Blackback. And number three, a Black and Blue Jig or a Black and Blue Texas Rig. 100%. Those are the three baits I'd be throwing, and I wouldn't put a single thing down. But, seeing how it is probably right now 45 degrees, the water temperature, well, down there... It's frozen, so you guys can kind of see how cold it is. Water temperature is freezing cold. I'm going to say probably 35, 36 degrees, I'm going to say, somewhere around there. I don't know. I don't have a thermometer, but just off of a guess, I'm going to say it's about 36 degrees. It's cold. So you have to condition your setup, condition your baits to go with that. You know, you see somebody ahead of you throwing an Alabama rig, they don't catch nothing. Go through there with a jig. You know, I've been seeing a lot of posts uh, on Facebook here lately of people talking about everybody's throwing an A-rig and I'm over here catching 10-pounders on a jig. And I've literally seen that happen. But I've also seen 10-pounders caught on Alabama rigs. I mean, that's not, that's something that's been happening for many a years now. You know, 10-pounders on Alabama rigs. They, I mean, it know, they know it works. But... A jig can work so much better than an Alabama rig because it's such a more versatile bait. You can only really do one of two things with an Alabama rig. You can either creep it really slow on the bottom or you can just fish it through the water column for those suspended fish. That's pretty much the only two things you can do. But with a jig, you can swim it, you can hop it, you can just barely even move it. You can drag it. You can burn it. You can do thousands of things with a jig. I've seen people catch jig fish on top water, believe it or not. I've seen people flip a jig, and that jig barely even hits the lily pad. And he brings it off that lily pad, and all of a sudden, boom, just a four-pound bass comes up and nails it. I've literally seen that happen. I've seen them. I've actually done this. Took a small finesse football jig, cast it up on a dock by accident, brought it off the dock, and a fish came up and smoked it right off the dock. I've done that, and it works. You know, so don't just think because hundreds of other people are doing it and hundreds of other people are catching fish, don't think, don't mean that you have to. You know, just because there's 20 people telling you you should throw an Alabama rig, go to that one person who has been catching 10 pounders all freaking weekend that's been throwing a jig. Don't go to those 20 people who've been catching you know, a bunch of 12 inchers on an Alabama rig. If you want to catch a big fish, I suggest in the wintertime going with a jig or an Alabama rig. Those are the main two baits. You see, you ever see those posts on Facebook, they're always talking about Alabama rigs and jigs. I don't throw Alabama rigs, especially around here, because most of the time in the winter, the water gets incredibly muddy. A lot of other places it clears up. Around here it gets in completely just chocolate milk like this is. So, in my best opinion, I think a jig catches the bigger fish. I think a small swim bait would catch, you know, a lot of fish. Numbers over size, quantity over quality. Uh, but, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Watch for the next few videos because I am going to be trying to get, at the very least, two videos out tomorrow. Which will be when you guys are watching this. There might be three depends on if I can get them all done today. So thank you guys for watching once again.